And here we are for the exact same thing. Uh, they had bazookas for this run. Although it's interesting because the bazooka mounts the same as the beam rifle on the back, and yet when you equip the bazooka, it's got two beam rifles when it shouldn't. Why is he in a red one again? Oh, no, wait. No, that's Char. Got it. Yeah, I know I'm not calling him Quattro, I'm calling him Char. Even though he's not even Char, he's Casval. He is a man of many names. I think Char was the one he wore the longest. These buildings were just collapsed with these giant robots. Not even, I mean, they'd collapse with a giant robot standing on them, much less landing on them from a, a flight 200 feet in the air. Did I even play Kakrakon's route? I don't remember. Yeah, it's been a while since I did the Titans. I think the last time I did the Titans route, I was just running the one-year war routes for the Titans. I wasn't even running the actual... <laughs> the actual Titans, because I just don't care for it. Titans were just a faction with no depth. They're the bad guys. We don't like them. Because they have all the properties that we, you know, admonish in people. We're heading back. And it, it just straight up parrots what we do with, um, with Opoly. It's just the exact same thing. Over and over and over again. Right, here I go. Spread out and attack. So, here's the weird part. They give us the red Rick Diaz for the next mission. Which, in the chronology of the series, would follow immediately after this mission. And yet... Uh, we see our partner mobile suit has the red one. That's that's a bit weird. Beam saber. We have to upgrade these Rick Diaz sooner, though, because. Roberto dies earlier on, so his later missions are going to be more difficult than Opoly's. That went nowhere. Sure, cool. I'm not sure the space flex are necessary. You know, the little, little dots that go flying around when you're moving to give you that sense of motion. I, I know when I'm moving, I've got thrusters flaring up. Even though that's actually kind of a bit weird, unless we're constantly accelerating, because, you know, Newtonian mechanics being what they are. That's one less to worry about. You wouldn't even maneuver that way if you were in, like, a close Earth orbit, though, because that, that's not how that would work. We're heading back. Okay, and now the red one. Yeah, why does it unlock now? That just doesn't make sense. Roberto, ready to launch. Spread out and attack. Here they come. Roberto, don't be late. Roger. Come on, you see that? 
I mean, right here is a good example of a Rick Dom successor mobile suit, because, I mean, the Rick Diaz has certainly got the look. Although it doesn't, I mean, so the whole thing with the Rick Dom, or, well, not the Rick Dom specifically, the Dom, was the fact that it had giant jet thrusters in its feet so it could hover. The thing is, by the time of the Grips conflict here, there must have been some kind of technological thing, because now that's kind of how all mobile suits get around. They just blast their thrusters and sort of ski along the ground. We see that with the Gundam Mark II in Jaburo. I mean, these mobile suits tend to have more thrusters, and they're probably more powerful or more efficient, and the mobile suits should theoretically be lighter, because they're using an inner frame system instead of a semi-monocoque with a space frame outer shell, which would be... well... I don't know, I find it weird that that would be lighter. You would think that would actually be heavier, because it would make it more flexible. But it wouldn't actually be lighter, because engineering-wise, that doesn't make any sense. The whole reason we use, like, space frames and I-beams and latticed bridge support structures is because we can achieve greater strength of the structure with less material and therefore less weight. So, it, it's, it's odd. It's just strange. I actually got a new type of evaluation for that. Okay, sure. And now we have the one mission that isn't in Opoly's route. Because he, well... I swear that it wasn't, like... Oh, okay, I'm trying to think of how to articulate this. From what I can recall, Opoly was commanding one shuttle. Roberto was commanding the other. Roberto had the shuttle with the mobile suits, and Opoly had the shuttle with the pilots. Here we go. And they, they lost the shuttle with the mobile suits and Roberto, and Opoly was able to escape with the pilots, because appropriately they determined that the machines can be replaced, but the pilots we need, because you can just build more machines. Uh, training, recruiting, getting more pilots is the harder part. But yet this is structured in such a way that Opoly is going to be flying away, but Roberto's flying around his mobile suit, because uh, how else would you put it in this game, this particular scene? It wouldn't work. So we have kind of some non-canon creative interpretation for this particular battle. If my memory is serving correctly. Usually does. So do my maths, for the record. Oh, I never I never get unamused when I just crunch some numbers in front of somebody, just like, okay, you know, ba da 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 get get a result and they're just how would you just figure that out it's like as i did the math and it's like what in your head like a savage oh that's that's a source of endless amusement like a savage oh i'm sorry if my mental maths are not sophisticated enough for you you button pushing cretin God, the funnier part is when you start getting into um, algorithmic models or e equational mathematics. Because people just have difficulty understanding that. Like, what what's the function of an equation? It's like, well, it's a logic module. You know, it's used to process numbers, facts and figures, from one state to another state. It's It's used for determining inputs and outputs. And, and then they just, they give you a, a long stare, and it's like, yes, but why and how? It's like, what do you mean, why and how? I just explain, uh, the how is basic maths, and the why is so that you can figure out more complex things than 2 plus 2 equals 4. Yeah, they look like shuttles, which is an interesting choice. I mean, there are people who are even like, okay, why, why don't we just go to the moon? 
And it's like, what, it's like, what do you mean, why don't we just go to the moon? Like, it's almost like they express it in the same sense that it would be as difficult as getting into your car and going to that that supermarket that's a mile out further than the one you normally go to. And it's like, it's space, man. First of all, the shuttle doesn't have the thrust to actually break orbit. No, the giant solid rocket boosters do not give it that. No, the huge fuel tank does not have enough fuel for that, considering the size of the shuttle. It just can't do it. And even if you could pull an arm again and slap extra boosters on the shuttle to get it up there, you still have to get it back from the moon, and that poses two new problems. You're going to need even more thrust. You can't, like, land a shuttle on the moon like you would on Earth on a runway, because there's no runways on the moon. And all of this is besides the point, because a lunar-to-Earth injection maneuver, where the craft ends up back in the atmosphere, produces more heat because of the velocities involved than an orbital-to-surface injection maneuver, which means that the the coating they use on the space shuttle, the reusable thermal coating, wouldn't be able to handle it. You know, the Apollo command module's coating was actually a sacrificial unit after it had depleted itself, because it's ablating. It keeps the command module cool enough that the astronauts and their gear don't roast by essentially vaporizing during the re-entry part. And even that aside, the heat shield behind the ablative material still gets so hot that it has to be jettisoned the moment it's done its job, or else the whole thing still roasts, and the space shuttle can't handle that, and it's like, well, can't they just figure that out? And it's like, well, of course they could figure it out, but uh, time is money, and money is time, and who's paying for that? Because, I mean, after we made it to the moon, there was a lot less interest in space in general. I mean, somebody's got to somebody's got to pay for the operation, you know, getting it into uh, development and getting it into space and the whole business. I mean, who knew all that Cold War, you know, all that Cold War sword measuring was, you know, going to motivate us to go into space. Oh, that's the pathetic part, is that that's what it took. Oh, our space program is so much bigger than your space program! <laughs> oh, so much accomplished, but with, like, the most primal, basic of driving forces behind it, having the bigger stick. Except now the sticks are rocket ships. And Sarah lives again. Not for lack of trying on my part. I feel like they make her tougher in this. Probably because she's the second uh, named character you encounter on the Titan side. Go figure. Oh. We're also not using the Nemo. Actually, I'm already in the alternate route, so it would probably be a good idea just to... Like, because why wait, right? We're going to need it eventually anyway. Besides, this is the Yazan one. Better to have my bases covered. This isn't fun in a Rick Diaz. Gap Flay. That transformation took a while to figure out until I saw somebody do a review of the high... I think it was a high-grade model of it. Commencing countdown. I actually uh, recently saw Adam Savage do his first Gundam build, which was a perfect grade unleashed RX-78, and he had to get, like, the whole tested crew in on it to help him out, because there's no way they would have been able to do that as a one-day build otherwise. And, of course, he's just, like, taken aback by the engineering involved in the model making. It's like, well, yeah, I mean... They've... Because he's trying to figure out the thermoset plastics and how they mold articulated parts inside of other articulated parts, and I just I just chalk that up to, um, you know, Japanese moon magic. 
Here's M team. Let's go. We'll move in when the anti-air fire dies down. It's Japanese space magic. Perfect grade. You've you've either got to be hardcore into models or hardcore into Gundam to drop, especially if you get multiple, because those things go for like 300 USD. I mean, holy hell! You could get a last generation game console for that, or it's just several games. Oh, you could probably get a new wardrobe for that. Can I stop getting just ping ponged around by these guys? And I can't hit anything. Wow, I am just getting my ass kicked. I mean, obviously it helps that my partner here is the Methus, which is damn useless. There we go. Just got to thin the field out a little bit, get some room to breathe. I dodged that somehow. That was totally intentional. We're going to pretend that was totally intentional. Oh, it's just down to you, Yazan. I heard you like a good scrap. That was some protracted iframes. Ow. Yeah, it's not as though they were that hard to destroy. I was just not hitting them. At all. They, they just wouldn't... Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, no, this is happening because we're in an alt route. Because Roberto is supposed to be dead right now. Too. Oh, no way I'm using a gym 2. You can go fuck right the hell off with that. Gee, that thing is... You're also the gym 1 in this game. And, the, I mean, that's, that's really bad because the gym is just trash. It's even canonically trash. All right, here we go. Don't hang back. That's one less to worry about. Not a chance. Get so we got the Argama, we got I don't remember what that ship is called. Oh, hey, it's the pleb again. What was it he said this time? I'll find you. As he as he entered the the fray or whatever, <laughs> Jared couldn't find water if he fell out of a boat. The AI doesn't spam the cheap melee attack that the uh, that that can do. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd have problems. Oh, he actually got to that one before me. I'm just keeping Jared busy, because we, what we have to do is destroy the substantially more mortal mobile suits here. Well, hit something. The ship is blocking all my shots. 
Okay, but how the hitbox for that is way bigger than it should be. Well, Oppoly, chill out here. I'm trying to keep you alive, and you're not making it easy. Now, I hit the switch target button. I wanted to melee the Barzam after that, and it just didn't. Decided, no, you're going to keep attacking Jared. As much as I'd love to keep attacking Jared, that wasn't what I was trying to do. We're heading back. Um, <laughs> that's a nice touch. The Alpoli gets the Gelgoog and Roberto gets the Rickdom. But no, we're we're staying the course with our mobile suit selection. I didn't upgrade them for nothing. I'm heading out. Spread out and attack. Yeah, we're gonna give them the gear and <laughs> we're gonna I'm gonna turn that into a, a a verb. We're gonna give them the gear and See that is the problem when you take your premise too seriously. You don't make obvious inside jokes like when somebody decides to wipe out a fleet with a colony laser. You reference the, the like time that happened in the series, you give them the gear and Really? Couldn't hit that. I just countered with a back shot. Oh, and now Haman's screwing me over. Oh! It slices, it dices, it just, it was just in range of that attack. Up Shiraka's bailing. Where are you running? Come back! Ah! Oh, oh! Oh, those funnels have it out for me. It's a good thing I'm fidgetier than a flea. Come here, come here. Is there nothing else we can destroy? Do we have to get Haman to bail as well? Yeah, no, it's just Haman. I guess we're just gonna keep thwacking her until she Fs off and then we get somebody else we can actually kill. Yeah, the recharging mechanics when you decide to go with the, the red Rick Diaz and the beam rifle are interesting because it doesn't recharge in the hand, but it recharges on the back, so you have to make sure to periodically swap that out or else you'll end up running out of beam charge. And if you get an arm blown off in recover, you can't swap them out, so you end up in the same predicament that the, uh, the Gundam Mark II ends up with where it can't reload. And still fire out of them if they're on the back. That's a plus. I'm not sure if it loses its whole arm when that happens over. It's just like the, the chunky shoulder armor that goes. I'm heading out. Yeah, this will be it for the... Well, I want to say the canonical routes, but technically this character and the other kid, my partner character, are both supposed to be dead. But this will be it for the primary, shall we say, routes in the AU Titans path, which means that when I come back to the AU Titans... Oh, yeah, no, my brain no work. When I come back to this, it will be for the special routes, and we get to start seeing some, some really interesting stuff happening. We've had the meat and vegetables, it's time for the damn pudding. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, 
Whoa! Okay, that's a nexus of pain. Where am I? I'm like flailing around. I'm like using the drunken fist in space. Don't take me lightly. Ow. Now oh, that cube really undercooked that maneuver. I hit Apple because he was between me and her and I couldn't see it because I'm literally firing behind myself. Apple is getting kind of shrecked. They're definitely picking on him more than me. Okay, well that's one fewer cubely. Oh, now there's a Gaza Sea to complicate matters, of course. Because the boss must have minions. Ha ha ha! That's... I love doing that. Somebody's rushing you or you're flying away and you fucking use the back lasers! Oh... Boy... Oh god, the drift. Floating around in space again. Making problems. Oh, and I'm drunk and fist in space again. It clearly works. I can't believe that hit. Oh, that might have connected if the... If the mirror wall in this map that is a source of endless irritation for me didn't get in the way again. There we go. Mission complete. Aug's basic stuff before we get to the fancy arm row joins the Aug route is now done. Oh. That'll be it for this session as well. That was three character routes. I don't know the time, but I'm wagering it was probably about an hour and a half. Maybe two. Yay. Yeah, well, Zeon's always causing problems. Now, that, that might sound one-sided, that Zeon is always causing problems. However, the Federation can cause problems, because they don't do anything! That's, that is the joke. That is the joke. They do absolutely nothing. The Federation, you know, has a silver spoon firmly planted betwixt their, their cheeks, you know, right next to their head. So yeah, I mean, I'm going to give a check, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's all done. Yes, it, it won't be in the next video, per se, but the next time I come back into the AUG, it's going to be this cool stuff. It's going to be Armour Joins the AUG. I'll probably start with Camille, because once I've done the, the Prime route for the main characters, I'll be able to swap between these without having to do a save load. And that'll be nice. It's just such a shame they won't let me do that by default. Would have saved me so much trouble. I wouldn't be doing the same routes over and over and over again myself just to avoid having to constantly save load between them. 